with the others, prepare for the dedication ceremony. Monsignor Senti is quite upset. This music is blaring throughout the building. But I piped it through the public address system. Make a joyful noise to the Lord with songs, cymbals, and trumpets. Because despite this blasted depression, in a neighborhood that's known nothing but despair for years, we built a hospital, St. Pelagius. Look around you. 
How can we know raveling in this achievement? This miracle? Sister, today I could wrestle with the devil himself. Instead, let's dance. Oh, no, Father McKee. Now, sister, you should get out more. Loosen up. I'll see you. <laughs> Would you care to listen with me? You should hear him play when the saints go marching in. That's right. Guests are starting to arrive for the dedication. Turn off the radio, Joseph. in a party to boot. Yes, you are there. Come on, everybody. Have you had any uh, dizziness or blurred vision? Terry got sick all over my blue suede shoes. Not exemplary behavior for the principal of an elementary school. Look, it's just that I've had this headache for the last two days and the pain keeps getting worse. You know, at first I thought it was just that I, I kept catching the sixth grade boys peeking in the girls' room. <laughs> you had a fever? Oh, yeah, it was uh, 103 this morning. What do you think's wrong? Uh, it, it could be anything from a uh, flu virus to neurological dysfunction. Like what? Like a brain tumor? Hon, no. it's not a brain tumor. Okay. I, uh, I would like to have you admitted for tests. Oh, well, no, I've got my Paganza Tigers going up against the Paul Revere Raiders tonight in the Pee Wee Hockey Playoffs. Terrence, for once, think of yourself and not all those kids. Can you play more down? Jump in, Jack. I'm gonna fly. Uh, would you do a CBC on Mr. O'Casey here? Oh, well, they're on their way. I'll get to you as soon as I can. Okay, over here with this one. Well, we need to let someone get used to seeing this. Here you go. I really appreciate you giving up your lunch hour. Some people couldn't care less that the Historical Society is putting together a perspective on this hospital. <laughs> it's not every day that St. Louisa celebrates its 50th anniversary. Do you mind if I use a tape recorder? So when did you arrive at St. Allegis? 1965. I was Mrs. Eisenberg then, a newlywed, and this emergency room was just being built. Um, excuse me, chaps. Do you know where the director of nursing is? I'm reporting for work. Nurse Nyquist's office has been relocated to the other end of the hall, but she's never there. I suggest you wait in admissions. Um, that way. Uh, thanks ever so much. Nice way. Donald, our new ER is going to have all the latest equipment. We have heart monitors, defibrillators, portable x-ray machines. Hmm? Rolly, don't you skimp on that insulation. You've done a wonderful job as chief of services, Daniel. As the free spirits say nowadays, I'm feeling groovy. <laughs> Can you smile? Oh, come on, Nurse Eisenberg. You can do better than that. You won't last a day around here, Limey. It's just that I'm used to a tad more responsibility. All my nurses start out in admission and work their way up or out that front door. St. Elicious. Elicious. Uh, Elicious, sorry. Um, hello. Hello. What's 
your name? Mine's Helen. What's the matter? I miss my mommy. Where is your mommy? Upstairs working. My mom is much further away than that. My mom's in England. Do you miss her? Yes, I do, quite a bit. Why do you leave? Oh, because I got married and my husband wanted me to come to America. You ever going back home? No, I don't think so. You know what you need, Luther? You need a sweetie. And I just happen to have one in my purse. Oh, Mark, it's great to see you. Wow, over the past ten years, you put on some pounds. Lost a little turf up top, huh? Daniel asked me to drop by. Now that Dr. Demidian's retired, St. Allegis is in the market for a new chief of surgery. Mm. I remember when we were residents, you said you'd never come back here to work. You promised. Yeah, well. The Democrats said they wouldn't go for Medicare. That Texan, LBJ, expect anything from a guy whose wife's name is Lady Bird. <laughs> Next car. And get a haircut, Mary. I understand you have a wife now. Mm. Oh, that's good. Because frankly, I was beginning to wonder. Where did you meet Mrs. Westfall? Well, uh, she had the lead in Kiss Me Kate at Emerson. And I attended every performance, and after the last performance, I finally got enough nerve to go backstage. I hate the theater. Saw Neil Simon's The Odd Couple. Shit. Would have been funny with two women. <laughs> Nobody's done anything about these lousy clocks, huh? No. So, Donald, any kids? Yeah, daughter Elizabeth. Congratulations. My son Stephen is nine. Just yesterday, Ellen took the training wheels off his bike. I tried to teach him how to ride. The kid has no coordination whatsoever. I'd love to have a son. Yes, Edgar. Yes, dinner will be ready. I'll make it as soon as I get home. Edgar, I am trying to be a good wife. <clears throat> um, well, perhaps you better talk about this later. Ta-ta for now. Excuse me, my, my friend doesn't feel too good. Uh, can you help? He's right over here. I met him last night in Cambridge at a welcome back party for Professor Leary. It might be kind of right. We got the bond, but he hasn't been the same ever since. What do you think? Terrence. Oh, Casey. Terry, this man is a doctor. I'd shake hands with a white rabbit, but I'm not sure I'd get all my fingers back. I beg your pardon. Face is melting. Don't touch me! All this energy! It's the, and the colors! And the, the laughing. And... Oh! Oh! You know, if this is what life, you, life is about, then uh, John and Paul and Ringo, they said. No! I can't get no satisfaction. Hold my hand, No, here. no. I can't get no satisfaction. 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 Yes, this man is psychotic. Get him into a straitjacket and up into a padded cell immediately. I think I can help. Will you let me? Let's get this man into sight now. What's your father's name? Patrick. Patrick, are you alive? Uh, no, bone ticker. Mother's name? Allison Gladden O'Casey. Allison Gladden. How's her health? I wouldn't know, haven't seen her since the Dodgers won their first series. Brothers and sisters? Well, I had a sister Sarah, but she died when she was 13. Her parents never told me why.
Last time we were at St. Eligius, Linda gave me a son. It was our only child. Yeah, my wife gave birth to our son here, too. We were in labor for 22 hours. Linda and I, we worked together. It was Lamas. Pretty radical back in 66. We felt so cool. I even got to cut the umbilical cord and everything. It was uh, early on a Monday morning Kevin was born. I remember because I was driving home to grab a nap. Adrenaline still pumping, singing crazy out of my mind. And this cop pulls me over, over on Storrow Drive. And I, I must have been doing about 90, but I hop out of the car, I hop up on the hood, and I shout to this cop, you're not giving me a ticket. Not today, ma'am, because today is the greatest day of my life. Is that your life? No, I don't know that. But it didn't matter. Listen, Doc, can I ask you a question? Yep. Do you think what's wrong with me is serious? It's too early to tell. Why don't you hop up under the bed and we'll uh, finish the exam? I can't move my legs. All right, don't, don't panic. Well, no, I, I can't move. Okay. Care. My son, I had to pick him up. The nurse won't let me go upstairs to the visiting hours. How's my husband? Well, he can't move his legs. What? But no. But his fever's responding to the antibiotics and the acetaminophen. Well, what the hell is wrong with him? I don't know yet. Well, should I contact our son? I don't want to bother him unless it's serious. He and his father aren't getting along. Call him. <laughs> I know, I know. You want another curve side. You know, I'm going to start taking a commission on your patients. No, 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 no. I'm on top of this one. I'm just not sure. Well, what do you have? 
40-year-old white male who presented earlier today with severe headaches, stiff neck, nausea. Now he's got partial paralysis. What's your diagnosis? Aseptic meningitis. Ah, uh, wrong. The Amber syndrome. We just had a patient with it, the, uh, the astronaut. Come on, Jack, you gotta think horses, not zebras. Phil, Mr. O'Casey's febrile to 103. That's not Guillain Barre. Okay, well, give him a spinal tap, give him a CAT scan, and give me a break. Oh, 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 oh. If, if you're on a break, would you take my little friend Pete here up to uh, Susie Larkin in the county? Sure. What else are you gonna ask me to do? I'm gonna massage your prostate? Come on. Question. Father living? Dead. No, he's not. Terry. Maybe I'm dead. It's okay, please. You never try that again. I know you're after me. All of you. No one is here to hurt you. I promise you that. I'm just getting by to see you, Mr. Casey. Oh, no. I'm getting smaller. I stopped growing and now I'm shrinking. Put that gun away! Go away! It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Everything is alright. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I shrunk. No. No, you're crouching in a corner. And you're in a hospital. Do you remember taking the acid? Yes. Somebody cut my arms off. You're in a straight jacket. Mr. O'Casey, I'd like to take care of you, if you'll let me. I'm your friend. Help me. How is it possible that this hospital is falling apart when the rest of Boston is undergoing a tremendous revitalization? In fact, this whole neighborhood reminds me of Flushing Meadow, before the World's Fair. Did you notice they tore down the tenements in Flannery's pub across the street? Of course I noticed it. You call that renovation? That's demolition. They're putting in a park. Daniel, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. It would be a great coup for St. Allegis to claim you as its own chief of surgery. Of course it would. But first, here are my final conditions. Complete charge of the OR from who scrubs for surgery to who scrubs the floor. Absolutely. The most sophisticated, up-to-date cardiac care equipment at my disposal. Possibly. And the same salary I am presently receiving at Boston General. Not a chance. Okay, let's forget the whole thing. We can't run amok. Runs better than this place. Mark, you're absolutely right. There's no reason for you to come back here. Even though it's Dr. Dominion's wish that you succeed him, you know when you left, it broke his heart. Spare me. Certainly. There is no possible way I can persuade you. So... You just returned to Boston General. And I hope you enjoy working under a newly named Chief of Surgery, Josiah Bartlett. I deserved that appointment. They have a very political climate over there. Mm. Mm. We could have a better surgical department than Boston General. They practice department store medicine over there. I need to know I'll make the difference, Daniel. And if there's anywhere that people need help, it's here. Welcome home. Can you guarantee me at least my own parking space?
the anniversary celebration is a pretty big deal for you guys, huh? It doesn't matter what you wear, just as long as you are there. I'll go inside, see if the technician's ready to do a CAT scan. Okay. How comes it? I had to borrow your mascara. He's your son. You could at least meet him halfway. I may never walk again. So you'll excuse me if I'm not interested in him or his feelings at the moment. No one's there. We had an appointment. Go we'll check the office. Dad? Came by because I'm concerned. All right, you're concerned. How are you feeling? I'm in a lot of pain. Is there anything I can do? It's funny that you wait till now to ask. Fine, I'll see you in another two years. He's out for lunch. You're telling me. No, I mean the cat scan technician. Tell me to keep you waiting. Lord? Lord? <laughs> no way. I'll go call him. Look, I'm sorry you saw that. No problem. You get along with your father? Don't have one. It's my fault that Kevin turned out the way he did. Uh, get me out of here. Bring me back to my room. Whatever you say, Miss O'Casey. Oh, I've seen. My son, this can wait. No, no, you came to this bathroom for a reason. God led you here to hear my confession. I'm listening. I have you sinned. When my wife, Anna, was young, she had rheumatic fever and it damaged her heart. And the doctors warned us that she shouldn't get pregnant because the strain of childbirth would be too much for Anna, could die. Use condoms when I make love to her. My son, God has given Anna to you and you to Anna so that you can live together as husband and wife. But God has also given you ways through science and medicine to express your love for one another. But what about the church teaching? I cannot absolve you from your guilt. But I will tell you to search your heart, pray, and ask for direction. Thank you, Father. I haven't absolved you, but go in peace. Thank you, Father. Morrison, I bumped you from the board. Who's Kathy are you trying to pull, anyway? Only a moron would schedule the procedure room for a two-bit spinal. Well, Mr. O'Casey, you can it. Give you a patient's spinal in his room, in the hallway, or anywhere but near me. I thought that spinal... Yeah, that's your problem. You think too much. Or too little. I can't tell which. Didn't you learn anything in that burrito factory, Carrollton University? Because here in El Americano, we do things with Yankee practicality. You really do belong south of the border. That's great, Luther. Thank you. You know, I was born here at St. Legis. C-section. 
Now it's called Five East, and I've been hanging around here one way or the other ever since. It's interesting. Lord, well, just in case you want to talk to somebody from the lower echelon. <laughs> Cream? Yeah, please. Dr. Westfall, you grew up around St. Allegis, didn't you? Yes, not very far from here. My father, uh, he was a school teacher. Shandy Englishman, thank you. Teaching Shandy Irish kids, and almost every day I walk home with him, right down the street here. Tell me about when you were named Director of Medicine. That was uh, 1975. Hi, Dad. Hi. Lizzie, you should knock first. Your father's very busy. She doesn't have to knock. <laughs> How'd everybody do? Dr. Carlisle gave Tommy and Lizzie both a clean bill of health. Dad, Nurse Nakarada said she'd give me some candy. Can I go see her, please? Sure. Take your brother. Oh, my Hi. Hi. A little lower, will you? Hmm. I've been thinking. If you can get the weekend, we can take the kids up to Sunapee. Is it my sister on the lake? Mm, I have a board meeting Friday. That means we get a late start. Oh, still, it'd be so great for us all to get out of this city. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get Tommy on his skates. Honey, I know we've been putting this off, but Mary Carlisle said we have to decide how we're going to deal with Tommy's Sweetheart, autism. he's two years old. We don't know that. Nothing has happened in a year. He just sits and stares his life away. Yeah. I'll be right there. I have a consult. Let's talk about this later, huh? What do you want for dessert? Ice cream. Would you pick it up on your way home? <laughs> hmm? Bye. Bye. Brooks, trim that beard, hmm? You interns are uh, very fortunate, not only because you're working for me. Weinberger, can you see through those jelly jar bottoms? Uh, because you're the first class to have a first class bypass machine. You're riding the crest of the wave of the new medical phenomenon. Alan Burns, each grab a hold of this plastic, will you? Look at this. Custom tubing, hemostasis filters, tachometer, membrane oxygenator. Top of the line. Technology that will carry us into the 21st century. Oh, for crying out loud. Play with your brother. He's so boring. I wish I had a sister instead. Or a pony. Besides, I have homework to do. Turn the radio off, please. Hi. Hi, Daddy. Hi. Careful. Lipstick. Yeah. Want a cocktail? No, thanks. And you really don't need one either. Did you pay the fuel oil bill? No, I thought you were going to do it. Hi, sport. That's my boy, huh? Oh. You say daddy? Daddy. Boy, he's getting heavy, isn't he? Up about no. this. No, no, no. Tommy's never going to be the son you imagined. But whatever it takes, we'll see that he lives as normal a life as possible. Mm -hmm. You promise? We're in this together. Right. Mm. The dryer. Don't go away.
Come on, Ellen, darling. You can help your mom, huh? Come on. Oh, honey, I bought two theater tickets from Dr. McGuffin for some sort of whodunit. That was sweet of you. Yeah. Just for next Wednesday. Theater on a weekday night? Why not? You love the theater. And you always say by the second act you feel like you're going to die in that chair. Father, you work hard. You should come home, eat your dinner... Turn on the Rockford files, slide into policewoman, and call it a night. Come here, sport. <laughs> your daddy brought home your favorite dessert. Oh, I forgot the ice cream. No, no, no. I'll go. You're a big shot director of medicine now. Stay here. Stir the stew every ten minutes. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And while I'm gone, would you pay some bills? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, oh, Casey. What do you think you're doing? Having a late night snack. Eat those eggs and hot cakes and you're a dead man. I'm hungry. Driving a bakery truck and you just reach in the back and snatch something off the rack. Yeah, well, one day you'll grab a crawler, your heart will give out, and they'll be scraping you off Calm Avenue. Come on over here. Damn nurse wouldn't give me any dinner. Well... That's because you're being operated on in the morning. Oh, I am? I got the results of your angiogram. Your cholesterol level is hovering around 500. Your blood pressure has gone into orbit. And there are barges of fat clogging your arteries. So, I'm going to do a coronary bypass. What's that? We put you on a machine that takes over for your heart. Then we bypass the faulty artery. And then we restart your heart. Bing, bing, bing. I don't know. I'm going to save your life, Patrick. A year ago, I couldn't have offered you that kind of hope. Think of all the things you've got to live for. Your son, what's his name? Terrence. And your grandson, what's his name? Kevin. Oh, you Irish are about as original as a donut. So do I have your complete cooperation? Sure. Good. See you first thing in the morning. Just you, me, and the bypass machine. Uh, doctor, how many of these operations have you performed? You're the first. Wish me luck. Good luck. <clears throat> I itch all over. You have an allergic reaction to the CAT scan diet. God, I can't stand this. Would you do something, Doc? We're going to give you a little shot of Benadryl. So just when the hell are you going to figure out what's wrong with me? I'm trying, Mr. O'Casey. How's Jerry? Uncomfortable. Starting to get unpleasant. How much longer till you know something? The spinal tap was inconclusive. And I still haven't gotten a result from a CAT scan. Why don't you get your son to take you home? Devin left. Said he'd pick me up in a couple of hours. God, I need some fresh air. I know it's none of my business. And you can tell me so. But what is going on between Mr. O'Casey and your son? My husband comes from a proud Catholic family. County Cork, Ireland. His grandfather escaped the potato famine, arrived in America. Got a job doing pick and shovel work in the railroad. Terry's father, Patrick, worked in the mills. After that job went south, he drove a bakery truck. Bill Casey's never had much to pass on except hope and the family name. No, oh, that's going to stop with our son, Kevin. Yeah. He's homosexual. Luther. Oh, the police wanted us to post these missing child bulletins. Some maniac grabbed a three-year-old from right in the middle of the common. Well, in my uh, first year as Daniel, as the director of medicine, I had to sit by and 
watch this neighborhood get poorer and poorer. Of course, the hospital costs increased. No one could afford to pay, so the St. Elysius filled up a huge deficit. It must have been a, a traumatic time for you. Yes, it was. When the heck are we going to eat? As soon as your mom gets back, honey, I don't know what's keeping her. Yeah. Will I have to leave my school and go to an all-black one? Well, why would you think that? Well, the older kids are saying we're going to be bust. Why would the teachers be so mean to us? Well, Lizzie, you can't take this personally, sweetheart. This is just a partial remedy to a very complex situation. I think it stinks. I'll get it. Probably Betty Russell. Hi. Oh, yeah, sure. Dad, for you. Who is it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be right down. You get your coat. What's wrong, Dad? Your mom's been in an accident, honey. Actually, I was deciding whether to stop by Flannery's for a pop. Forgiveness for what? I just finished speaking with Father Bernard. He told me at breakfast this morning you engaged him in a theological discussion about birth control. It's my suspicion that Father Bernard would be a plumber today if the priesthood required a vow of silence. God has set us upon this earth to multiply. Interference is a transgression against his will. Contraception is a way of preventing dangerous and unwanted pregnancies. At a time when babies don't have enough food in our bellies or warm clothes on their shivering bodies, we cannot continue to multiply in blissful ignorance. St. Eligius is a Catholic hospital. And you, as its chief administrator, are accountable to God, to the archdiocese. I'm aware of that, Monsignor. I have chosen my faith and guide my ways accordingly. But I will not require that every suffering human who arrives on our doorstep be converted before being given shelter. That's not compassion. You labored to build this hospital. Running it will be even more difficult without church funds. Are you threatening me? I don't like you, McCabe. You're a smoothie from Southie. You wear a clerical color so people will think you're a good person without doing anything to earn it. And you're a petty bureaucrat who uses the power of the Catholic Church as if Jesus Christ was your idea. Hey, Boomer. Oh, Phil. Thanks so much for suggesting a CAT scan of Mr. O'Casey. He had an allergic reaction to the dye. Oh. Medicine's a judgment call. You screwed up. You trusted me. <laughs> I need the uh, test results on uh, Terrence O'Casey's CAT scan. I just called my wife. Told her I was on my way home for lunch. Tortellini. <laughs> mm. Print out, please. Okay, see. Okay, see. Yeah. Okay, see. Not here. Come back after lunch. You look again. It's not here. Mm -hmm. Neither was the tech when I came down here earlier. If you're through, so am I. Wait a second. Look, I've got a patient upstairs. I gotta pick up my son. Take it easy, take it easy. Come on, open up. I wake up. up in the morning and I dread coming to work. I hey. get here, all I want to do is leave. Hey! 
And I know what we do is important. Open the door. It's necessary. Patients depend on us. They put their trust in us. And how do we respond? By losing their paperwork. Leave you stranded in the hallway. Treating them like a bunch of symptoms. And we've abdicated our authority to technology, the machines. Now, I may not be the best doctor in this hospital, but I care about the people I treat, and I won't let one of them die just because my, my lunch is getting cold. And my luggage is... She did a whole battery tests on her brain stems damaged Daniel very badly. What are you gonna do? <laughs> what am I gonna do? I wait and I pray. Same thing I did with my father after his stroke. Ten years I sat by his bedside waiting for a miracle. And you're prepared to do that all over again? I have to. Donald, even if someday Marine's heart and lungs could return to normal function. Her brain is dead. <laughs> Can you, I can't reconcile medical facts with what I'm feeling in my heart. That's my wife. That's the most vital human being I've ever known. She taught me to open up. I can't imagine life without her, without that force. Marine's suffering is over. Yours is just beginning. You've got to decide what's best for your family. And more importantly, what's best for her. I'm scared, Daniel. I really am. What about those kids? How the hell am I going to handle Tommy? Huh? She'd laugh at my indecision. I don't say you better decide this right now. But if it's her time, you've got to let her go. With the bypass graft in place, I have successfully restored ample coronary circulation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Patrick O'Casey lives, thanks in no small way to the wonders of science and me. Burns, you close. Alan, watch, because you really need the suture time. And Weinberger, you are adequate, as always. You're the best. Ah, the lovely O'Casey family. Um, how's my father? I saved his life. He should be peddling those pastries well after the retirement age. We don't know how to thank you. Just pay the bill. And get this bread out of here. This is a surgical area, if I'm crying out loud. Not a playpen. Thank you, doctor. Your grandpa's <laughs> all better. <laughs> Boy, you're getting heavy. Already out of breath. <laughs> Come on, sweet. That's great. Do something, please. What happened? He's drinking a glass of water. He chokes and stopped breathing. What's wrong with this man, anyway? You don't know yet. You're a doctor. You're supposed to know. Ellen, not now. He's going to die, isn't he? My husband's going to die. No, he's not. Not while I'm around, I promise. Let's intubate and get him on a respirator. What was this neighborhood like when you were growing up? I uh, Mrs. Meredith, you're going to have to excuse me. I have to go on rounds. Maybe we can talk again later. I don't think I have uh, much more to tell you. I'll call you. Sweetheart, I want you to be Daddy's very strong little girl. 
Nice. And you're going to have to help me take care of Tommy. But I'm so scared. I know it, sweetie. I know it. Look, why don't you go back to the waiting room and ask Aunt Constance to take you around the corner to break them to get an ice cream corner, right? What one? Yeah, right. <laughs> Give your mom a kiss, huh? Just keep an eye on Terry tonight. Yes, I will. Can I have you paged if there's any change in status? Thank you. 